Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to our science lesson today. Um, today we are tackling these questions on the board. 26, question 27, 28, 29, and question 30. Yeah, if you analyze these questions, you'll find that most of them are coming from class 4 and 5. Yeah. So question 26 reads, the transfer of heat by convection takes place in Dutch convection. Yeah. Now, I've explained here that in, in solids, the transfer of heat is called conduction in solids. Now, radiation is referred to as the transfer of heat in a vacuum where there is no medium, where there is no medium. And the media here, we are talking about air, we are talking about water, and we are talking about gases. Yeah? We also say that radiation is the movement of heat horizontally, the movement of heat horizontally. Yeah? We warm our bodies over a charcoal jiko using radiation across the room. Now, convection. Convection is the transfer of heat in liquids and in gases. In liquids and in gases. And so our answer here, after that explanation, our answer will be liquids and gases. The transfer of heat in liquids and gases is called convection. Boys and girls, I hope you have understood that. Now let's look at question number 27. The temperature at which a substance melts is the same temperature at which it does. Now, let's come to this diagram. And I've always advised boys and girls to, to, to write so li ga. So li ga are the abbreviations for solids liquids and gases once again the abbreviations of solids liquids and gases we have used it as an mnemonic to be able to remember the order in which we arrange and so there these ones represent the three states of matter solids liquids and gases represent the three states of matter and so when you apply heat, you heat a solid. So on heating, the solid melts. That means the process that takes place is called melting. And then the solid after melting, it changes its, its state to liquid. If you heat the liquids again, heating on heating, the liquids evaporate. Evaporation is the process by which liquids change to gases. That's evaporation. All right. Then, if you heat the gas, the gas will expand, obviously, but they will not change their state. The gas will expand most. Yeah, it is said that gases expand most on heating, but they don't change their state on heating. So, Heating requires increase in temperature. Heating requires increase in temperature. So the two processes that require increase in temperature are melting and evaporation. Then, if we cool the gas, we cool the gas down, the gas condenses. So the process is condensation. When the gas condenses, it becomes a liquid. It becomes a liquid. We have begun our reverse. Now, if you cool the liquid again, cooling, if the liquid is cooled down, it freezes. And on freezing, the liquid becomes a solid. The liquid becomes a solid. That is called freezing. Boys and girls, you can see that. Before we go to we go to the to sublimation, sublimation obviously 
is the direct change of state from solid to gas directly skipping the liquid state. So the solid becomes a gas directly avoiding the liquid state. Or the gas becoming a solid directly avoiding the liquid state. That is called sublimation. That process is called sublimation. All right? Now I want us to look at this diagram again and put arrows that way. That arrow, this arrow points that way and it again points that way. And the same thing happens here and there. These two processes, melting and freezing, happen at the same temperature. Same temperature. Again, these are the two processes here. Evaporation and condensation happen at the same temperature. Same temperature. When you draw that diagram that way, it is easy to know that they happen at the same temperature. And so back to our question, the temperature at which a substance melts is the same temperature at which it freezes. It freezes. So the right answer is B for boy. I hope you have understood that diagram properly. Now question number 28. Different shapes of the moon are known as dash. Different shapes of the moon. Let's come to this next page. This is the shape of the moon when it's a new moon. You see dots. You cannot see it's not visible. It's not visible. And so we draw the dots to indicate new moon. Then it begins, it becomes a crescent. These are the shapes of the crescent. The first crescent and the last crescent. Then the first quarter. There's the last quarter. Then there's the gibbous. This one all black one. Then the full moon, a full circle. That's a full moon. These are called the faces of the moon. They are called the faces of the moon. And the faces of the moon, not like the face of a human being or an animal, but the face of the moon is spelled that way. P-H-A-S-E-S, -S, faces of the moon. Not A. A, the word, the, the choice A is also read as faces, but it, it means a different thing. So this is not what is referred to as the faces of the moon. So the answer is D. Boys and girls, I hope you have understood that. Let's come to question number 29. 29. The sac-like structure that encloses the testes is known as dash. Is known as that. That refers, we have to refer to the um, uh, reproductive organs, the male reproductive organs. Hmm? We will still have to observe them all. Now, this is the, male, the female reproductive organ, female reproductive organ, and this is the male reproductive organ. Now looking at the female reproductive organ, you can name the part, the, the oviduct, the oviduct, also known as, the oviduct is also known as, um, is also known as the fallopian tube, fallopian tube, fallopian tube. This is where fertilization takes place and ovulation begin, uh, happens through that tube. That's why it's called a duct. An ovi, a duct. An ovi stands for ov ovum, and then duct stands for a tube. So that means a tube within which the ovum moves. Ovi, duct. Now, this one is called the ovary. A place where over 
are produced. A place where over are produced. There is the cervix, the gateway to the uterus. It's called the cervix, the gateway to the uterus. It's called the cervix. It separates the cervix from the vagina or the birth canal. Then it separates the uterus from the birth canal. Now, we have the vulva, the entrance of the vagina is called the vulva. Then we have the uterus where the, the baby or the fetus develops for nine months. That is the uterus. I hope you've understood. Ova is the plural of ovum. When it is one is called an ovum, when they are many, they are called ova. Now, this is the male reproductive organs. Uh, then, so this is our main agenda today. We have the urethra. This is where the sperm and the urine pass out. And then this, the, the, the urethra is within the penis. Then you've got the testes, two of them, testes. The scrotum is this covering. It's a sac like structure that covers the testes. That's the scrotum. Then you've got the epididymis, where the storage is. Now, there's the ureter there, and the sperm duct is there's also called vas deferens. Vas deferens, the sperm duct. Now, having known this, now this one gives us the answer directly as the scrotum, as the scrotum. I hope you have understood boys and girls. Question number 30. Question number 30 and our last one today. Which of the following pairs of diseases are immunized at the age of six months? Is it six months? It's supposed to be nine months. I have, uh, it's supposed to be nine months. In the book, it's nine months in the question. Nine months. All right? At nine months. Now, let's look at this table here. At birth, which vaccine is given and against which disease? Polio vaccine and the BCG vaccine. Now, the disease here treated, the disease treated here is polio or vaccinated against is polio and tuberculosis at birth. Uh -huh. The second dose is given at six weeks, polio 2, and diphtheria, polio 2, and diphtheria. Then, DPT stands for diphtheria. That's where there is the whooping cough. Whooping cough is under diphtheria. So the disease here is whooping cough. Then, at 10 weeks, we have polio 3, that's the third dose of polio, and diphtheria, the second dose of diphtheria, All right? Then at 14 weeks, we have the fourth dose of polio and the third dose of diphtheria. Then at nine months, finally, we have yellow fever and measles, yellow fever and measles. And so that answers our question that the right answer should be measles and yellow fever at nine months measles and yellow fever at nine months now boys and girls we have come to the end of our revision today i hope you've understood the explanation i would like to urge you to keep on doing revision reading day and night to be able to update yourself with the syllabus. Meet you next time. Bye-bye.